Let's face it, most people are bored silly at their jobs, but we as teachers have an advantage because we can actually have fun in the classroom. And this is really important because most of the time your students are probably quite bored. So I want to tell you about a game that I've been playing for many years in the classroom and it's really great for summaries. I actually used it yesterday because I finished a month long intensive course. And this is a game that's great for summaries of grammar, vocabulary or anything you want to adapt it to. Now if I'm being honest with you guys, I didn't actually invent this game myself. I learned it from a colleague that I worked with in Italy many years ago and I call him Andy the Game Master. This was a guy that I used to go and visit after all my lessons and he would always have a new game he would share with us. So that's a great way to learn from each other. Okay, so this game is called The Sentence Auction and it involves like gambling. I told you it was fun. So the premise of this game is basically you show your students a sentence and they have to tell you if it's correct or if it's incorrect. And if they're right, they win a point, a prize, money. Well, maybe fake money. We are just teachers, right? So as I said, I usually use this to review grammar or vocabulary, but you could easily use this as a speaking exercise or even as a listening exercise. So all you need to do is collect as many incorrect sentences as you can. I normally keep a note of this throughout the course, either from homework assignments or just from listening to my students as I go around the classroom. And the reason I suggest collecting it over a period of time is when you're put on the spot, it's really hard as an English teacher to come up with incorrect sentences. I just can't do it off the top of my head. And the other thing is also to collect good sentences. So you want to praise your students at the same time. Now, once you collected your sentences, you can arrange them in different ways. If you want to go old school, you can just write the sentences out one by one on the board. Of course, this can be a little bit time consuming. So what I tend to do now is I actually write them up in a Word document and I print them out and give photocopies to all of the students. Equally, you could do this as a PowerPoint presentation or if you're trying to practice listening, you could record yourself saying the sentences or you could get volunteers to read the sentences. There are so many different variations of this game. Another really cool thing to do is to print out fake money. Wait a second, you could probably do that for the game too. So the students really react well when they have some fake money in their hands. So what I tend to do now is to print out different kind of denominations of dollar bills. I normally keep it US dollars, even though I'm British. So you can have your, your $1 bill, your, your 5, 10, 100, whatever you choose. Now, the thing I've also found is that because it's fake money, the students tend to bet whenever they want and they bet everything. So a good thing to do is to come up with some forfeits. Of course, you don't want to discourage your students by punishing them with English, but you can get them to do funny things. So one forfeit could be having to say the alphabet backwards while hopping on their leg. Or you could get them to sing a song in English. Just something mildly embarrassing that will stop them blowing all their money in one go. And once you've got all this prepared, it's time to explain the rules. So I better do that to you now. So it's quite simple. You come up with the rules. But what I say is that they look at the sentence and they have to decide if it's correct or in incorrect. Correct means using the right grammar structure with no mistakes, using vocabulary in the right way, and also you can check for spelling and if it's logical. This is one way that you can catch them out because it could be a perfect sentence, but it might be illogical. On Sundays, my dad likes to eat soup through his ears. Yeah, that's a tradition in England, didn't you know? So this game really works well with pairs or small groups. You don't want to have many more than three students in a group because then someone might kind of take over. You want everyone to have a say and to be able to practice this. So what I normally do is have my pairs and I will start with pair A and they will have to say whether they think it's correct or incorrect. And if you're actually betting, which I recommend you do, they have to say how much of their money they want to bet. I normally give the students about $100 to start with. So just a note on betting. Now, we are English teachers. We're not maths teachers. So try to keep the bets to a round number, fives and tens. And obviously, if they bet $5 and they win, they get $5 back. 
If they lose, they lose $5. So keep it simple. So this means that for the first group, if they've said it's correct and they've bet a lot of money on it and everyone else says it's incorrect, they can't change their mind later on. And this makes it more fun. The next time I go round for the next sentence, I'm going to choose the next group. So it means that everyone's at a disadvantage at least once as we go round. So at this point, you've got one sentence on the board or you're looking at a particular sentence and every single pair has said whether they think it's correct or incorrect and how much they're willing to bet. This is when the fun really begins for you as the teacher because you can start bluffing or trying to influence them. So for example, if we've got a sentence that is clearly correct and these students have said, oh, we think it's correct. You're like, oh, really? And you can do this as much as you want, but try and make it a little bit unpredictable. Otherwise they will catch on. But it's a lot of fun and it can make a really nice atmosphere in the classroom if you kind of try and mislead them a little bit. So I normally let this game run for about 20 to 30 minutes. I think that's a, a good amount of time and it's great for the very last activity in a class at the end of a course. Now my advice to you is to end the last sentence on a tricky one. to so something that will make them all think it's correct or think it's incorrect, but actually it's the reverse. And then you say that for the last bet, it's all in. So all the money they have remaining, they have to bet. And if they lose, then they're gonna lose all their money. But of course, you can do this in absolutely any way you like. I'm just a cruel teacher. So why not give it a go? And if you found this a useful video, please give me a like, and I'll see you in a future video very soon.